Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar. We're thrilled to have you here for the exciting session featuring Leah and Trizzy from Ticket to Anywhere. Um, before we get started, I'd like to go over a few housekeeping. This is being recorded, so if you miss anything, know that we're going to have this on YouTube as well as the Travel Goods Hub. Um, feel free to use the chat to engage with each other and ask each other questions throughout the presentation, and we'll have a dedicated Q&A at the end. Um, Leah and Trizzy are inspiring voices behind the Ticket to Anywhere podcast. They're seasoned travelers who have explored countless destinations around the globe, sharing their unique experiences along the way. Their podcast is full of insights, covering everything from hidden gem destinations to practical tips on making travel more accessible and enjoyable. Today, Leah and Trizzy will be taking us behind the scenes, sharing their expertise on tech, tools, and gear that help them document their travels and create content for the audience. If you're not already following them, be sure to check them out at Ticket to Anywhere on all major podcast platforms like Spotify and Apple Podcasts, and make sure you give them a follow on Instagram too. Um, Ticket, the number two Anywhere podcast for even more travel tips and stories. So without further ado, let's give a warm welcome to Leah and Trizzy. Awesome. Hi. Wow, Judy, you nailed it. Yeah. Nailed it. Beautiful. <laughs> it's amazing to be here. Thank you, everyone, for giving us your time and attention. I am Trizzy, one of the co-hosts of To Get to Anywhere podcast. Yep. And I'm Leah, also co-host. We've been at it. We just passed five, well, five years for our internal anniversary, right? Five years when we started producing. <laughs> So we've been around for that long, but yeah, Ticket to Anywhere, uh, we are on YouTube and anywhere you can listen, and we are a travel essentials podcast. So gear, tools, tools, tips, stories, advice, um, anything you need to get started with travel and continue your travels, you know, we aim to be your first stop for infinite travel, whether you have a um, a full-time job or you freelance or however you set your life up. We want to be able to help you travel more. And we release episodes every other Wednesday. Thanks for sharing, Trizzy. <laughs> no problem. Well, we would like to introduce us individually. I'm Trizzy. Um, I like to believe I am an athlete, uh, specifically a woman hooper. I grew up playing basketball. And while I had a basketball in one hand, the other hand, I had a camera. So I grew up with both of these passion. So content creating was kind of, you know, I started when I was younger, not knowing what content creation was. Um, and now I am working professionally as a videographer, photographer, and video editor in the music industry. And I've been at that for about over a decade. And it has helped me utilize all the skills that I've learned there and transferring it into creating content on the business side and just using it for sports and travel, both my passions. Uh, you can find me at Triz Inc. basically on, on most of all the social media platforms, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, or X, I should say. Um, and my website is trizinc.com. Sweet. And I'm Leah. Now, Trizzy and I, maybe I may be aging ourselves here, but we've known each other for like 17 or 18 years. And we became fast friends. So we met either freshman or sophomore year of, of university. And, you know, like I mentioned, we've been at the podcast for about five years when the idea came around. So we've, we've, um, grown an amazing friendship but we're very we're very very different <laughs> but we very. work well together so I'm Leah proud first generation Filipino America Filipino American who's always chasing the sun iced coffee or glass of wine in hand I do try to when I travel find all the coffee shops and visit my goal is to visit every wine country um, on the planet uh, I'm an auntie proud auntie podcaster I'm a travel advisor brand new certified uh, for us, certified, really excited about that, uh, content creator and event manager. And a lot of my lines, um, as far as like professions are really blurred, which I actually love. And I've actually worked really hard for the past 15 years to get it to a point where my, my life and my work is really flexible and intersectional. So 
very happy with that. And I feel like I'm having fun every day. So you can connect with me at LA in flight on any single platform. Um, yeah, any single platform, but that's who I am. Awesome. Okay. So let's talk hardware, hardware gear. And as Leah mentioned, we are very different. Um, so I like to carry very heavy things on, <laughs> on my travels, which could be a struggle. Um, but First and foremost, Apple iPhone is one of the most used gear that I have every single day, every single trip, every single meal. I have it with me, so I'm always capturing content with that. Uh, my latest addition will be the DJI Osmo Pocket 3. And this is such an amazing addition because I'm a little bit on the shyer side when it comes to creating content. So having this tiny gadget, this tiny camera on me, nobody's going to know that I'm like recording myself and uh, nobody's going to know if I'm recording a walking video or something. Um, it has a built-in gimbal. The features on it is great. 4K videos. It is top notch. Uh, my next one is very similar. Insta360 X3 model. That one kind of captures all around you. But the thing is, you'll have to go into the editing software and adjust if you want this angle to the right side or the left angle or the top or the bottom or yourself, a POV. Um, my next one, my heaviest, but I like to call it my baby, is my Sony a7 III. And this one I use professionally a lot and also to create content. Um, the two tripods that I have, one is like a full tripod, full length tripod that can handle basically all my gear from the Apple iPhone, from even the Pocket 3, the Insta 360 and the Sony camera. Um, if you see my mouse, it's this Ulanzi one, Ulanzi TT09. That is also known as a travel tripod. So you could take it on camping trips, you could take it on international trips. It should be small enough to pack in a backpack. Um, this one here, my Flex tripod, Ulanzi MT68. That one looks like it cannot hold my big, large Sony a7 III camera, but it actually does. And I've tested it with my larger lens and it's held up perfectly. Um, that is more of a small, tripod that you could carry with you anywhere as well um, takes up less space than the full length tripod and you could kind of flex the legs to attach it on fences on poles to have it steady if you want like a higher frame of whatever you're capturing um, also i have a dji mini 3 pro drone and that has been <laughs> the struggle, the most struggle gadget that I have. Um, but I still love it. The bird's eye view shots that you can't get with the regular camera. It just heightens your content. And to store all my footage and all my videos, files, anything that I need, I carry a SanDisk portable SSD. It's um, two terabytes. You could find, I saw that at Costco recently, They're, they have one and it's cheaper than the cheaper than the price that I got it from like Best Buy. I think it's like $20 cheaper. So check out your nearest, your nearest Costco to grab it. I don't know how long it's gonna be there for, but it's a good deal for all you Costco lovers. Um, and to pack most of this, this gear that I have, I use the Wandered Rogue Sling. So it's kind of like a fanny pack, but you could transform it into like a sling backpack. And I'm able to carry three of my gears at a time. Um, my Sony, yeah, my Sony with the zoom lens and usually the Insta360 and my um, prime lens. So they do have a larger bag, like a nine liters, if you want to maybe squeeze in a drone with your uh, zoom lens and your camera. So um, the quality of it, the built of it, I feel like it's pickpocket safe, so nobody could get in there. 
Um, but yeah, that's this is my gear. I have others, but man, it'll take the whole day to go down. <laughs> Wait, I'm curious, Trizzy, go back. I'm What's curious up? how you you pack it in your 6L um sling, but how would you pack it if you have one carry-on person and one personal item? I'm so curious this how you pack would, all the gear. Okay. Yeah. So I put all of my smaller gears into my fanny pack, into the, the rogue sling, and that is able to store into my backpack. So okay. when I get on land, that's when I take it out and use yep. it as like my day pack and stuff like that. Okay. So yeah, it's just like an extra toiletry bag or for packing sure. cube. For sure, for sure. Okay. Yeah. It's Probe. chunky sometimes though. I bet. <laughs> You're, I can imagine you sitting there like, uh. <laughs> yeah and the cool thing is the cool thing about it is like they give you spacers and it's cushioned so oh, it's great. very well protective mm -hmm. love it mm -hmm. okay my hardware gear is a little bit more unserious <laughs> than trizzy's because she is a professional like she literally does this for um a lot of like she's been doing it for much longer than i have <laughs> We are Apple fangirls, so I do have a 13 Pro iPhone, and I dropped this in the chat, but my favorite Trizzy line is the best camera is the one you use the most, and we always just happen to, look, I literally have it right here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we always just happen to have it out, and it's great for, you know, vertical video especially. Um, I don't update my gear as much as, oh, I didn't, let me tap this in, as much as Trizzy does, but... <laughs> The next one there. Um, I use the Go. I'm still using the GoPro Hero 7, which is a 2019 model. It's wild. And now this is actually funny. The last Travel Goods show. Who was it? Chris of Matador. See the yellow, <laughs> the yellow stick that it's on. That is the floating stick. It's like for the water because all GoPros are waterproof and literally like the founder of Matador was trying to unscrew it and he couldn't because I think it's rusted in there. So my GoPro is permanently on a GoPro floating water stick, but that's great. I mean, it, that means it's always like water ready to go into the water. <laughs> it's, not it's, gonna, little, it's not going to sink. It's not going to sink anywhere, no matter where. But um, it's just the bright yellow sometimes that I'm like, oh, you know, but Hey, it still takes it still takes a great photo, even though it's about to be five years old. This Hero Seven, um, new to me. Let me let me add something oh, yeah. about that. So, <laughs> Maui Maui's my partner and also my forever travel partner. She, when I first met her, she had a GoPro Hero Three, I believe, and then since then, we've upgraded GoPros maybe two or three times. All the new ones we did not like. We loved mm. the GoPro Three the best. So, so maybe it doesn't I should keep matter. my seven. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't matter. If it works, it works. <laughs> well, I actually forgot to drop it in, but Trizzy, you saw it. I took this fire underwater photo in the Philippines like less than a year ago, mm -hmm. and it was the brightest blue I've ever seen, even out of all of my iPhone iterations. No matter what camera, I was like, this has no editing, and it's a GoPro that's five years old. There you go. <laughs> so I'm just going to hold on to it until it literally doesn't turn on anymore. <laughs> I also, um, another plus for Costco, I did get it on Costco. I got like the bundle Costco Black Friday sale. At the time, they just released the GoPro 8. So I was like, you know, buy it. If you buy a model older, it's going to be less expensive. I got like a huge, uh, this incredible bundle for like under 180. So nice. another plus for Costco. Very new to me, like four months new is dji osmo pocket 2 i'm still literally learning how to figure it out like how to turn the sound on i still haven't figured it out um pocket 2 is a level what under trizzy has and it's a 2020 model but it looks fantastic and it's very discreet and you'll see i have some photos here of it and uh my the laptop i have i have a 2021 macbook that i'll try to keep for 10 plus years because it's fantastic and it's my life uh, I get compliments for this one everywhere I go, a laptop stand, and because I cannot have my neck bend down like this. And I try to do as many things as I can on my laptop versus my phone. I know that's like contradictory to packing light and small and little, but the laptop stand, probably the best $20 investment 
you'll ever have. Um, tripod. I don't have to like, I actually have a bunch of tripods. The, the one I use is the one on the screen here in the top right if you're looking at it. And I will say this will get you into Disneyland because Disneyland's rules are as long as you can pack your tripod into your bag and it's not like sticking out or being obstructive, then you can bring it in because I usually wrap this tripod in a cloth and it literally looks like a weapon. And the security took it out and they were like, is this a weapon or a tripod? I was like, sir, it's a tripod. And he's like, okay, you're good to go. He didn't even open it. So you can bring your tripod into this. <laughs> This it's multi-use. It actually can be a weapon. As it well. can be. I mean, it can be. You just got to practice, you know? <laughs> um, I've learned this a hard way. Always two pairs of headphones. I always bring one wired and one wireless just in case you need to connect or you lose or the Bluetooth doesn't connect, whatnot. So always two pairs of headphones. Lens cleaning cloth for the phone. This is the most underrated thing um, that people like don't carry. <laughs> And wiping on your shirt is just not good enough mm -mm. many, many times, which I experienced last weekend in Nashville. No matter how many times I've like wiped it, I was like, dude, I need like a microfiber cloth. So also a good like $2 investment. <laughs> Mini mics, uh, those I just started using, the ones you can just get off Amazon and like plug into your phone. Cord wraps and labels. This has also been a game changer for me in my like tech bag, just wrapping everything up and labeling it with different colors and a Sharpie. It's like, all right, this is USB-C. This is like universal cord. This is my old iPhone cord, et cetera. Just like grab and go. Mini ring light, which attaches to my either laptop or my phone. Um, these are also, I love being in the water on a boat, wherever I can be. Waterproof phone plate, phone case. Also game changer. Actually, the first time I ever used a waterproof waterproof phone case was at a pool party in Las Vegas. I think it was literally at like Encore Beach Club. And I thought it was the silliest thing. I saw someone else using it. And then after that, it became a staple in my travel goods. So <laughs> like if it's good enough for a pool party in Vegas, then it's good enough for a boat tour in the Philippines. <laughs> <laughs> and my earth pack bag, this one's also game changer. The one with like the straps, basically any waterproof backpack with straps that you could like take on a boat and it could be basically immersed in water will help with the gear. And then Salon Plus, uh, it's basically lidocaine numbing patches for all that running around content creation that you're going to get. You're going to want to relax at the end of the day and put this on <laughs> your joints. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Especially for long flights, I usually will put them either on my knee or on my lower back and it has helped. Yeah, my knees need it. I'm about to put them on tonight. It's been a long <laughs> week. So, <laughs> Okay, so the software, the editing, the apps, what do we use? Me personally, I love, I grew up as an Adobe gal. So Adobe Creative Suite is my go-to. Um, for video editing, I use Premiere Pro and After Effects. After Effects is if I want to get really, really... Uh, complex with transitions, graphics, and making myself disappear from somewhere. Uh, for photos, I use Lightroom um, and Lightroom Mobile in Photoshop. Lightroom Mobile, I have a paid subscription. It's $50 a year. And what that does, it allows me to edit raw photos on the go. If you just have the free version, you can't edit the raw photos and you can't um, remove people or remove uh, something unpleasant in a photo so you don't really have much of the features. You could still edit colors and lighting, but I think for $50 a year, it's pretty worth it, especially if your main thing is like photography. Um, and of course, we're a podcast for podcasting. Um, when I'm editing our episodes and leveling out our audio, I use Adobe Audition. And also that's what I use to record as well. Project and idea management, Notion has become my BFF for this. They have a lot of templates available for you and it could be content related or even just life related. Whatever you need, they have it for you, uh, such as budgeting, monthly budgeting. If you're into keeping track of your finances, your task list for every everyday to-dos, um, content calendars, uh, travel planning, and shot lists. 
the cool thing is with the travel planning, what I plan to do in the future is if I'm planning for, let's say my, my next Finland trip, I'll have an itinerary already set. And the, the template that they give me has all the designs, all the information that I need to add in there. So I could save that down, post it as like a digital download for free or subscription if I want to um, have people buy my trip itinerary, it's already on there. So it's not like you're moving all your information from your notepad into like a Photoshop or something to make it all pretty. Literally the Notion templates have everything for you one and done so um like i said it's my bff and also google drive and google workspace is some something i frequent um to store digital assets i use everything between my apple icloud a box account and also google drive Every once in a while, if I'm in a rush, I'll use Apple iPhone notes to just jot down, oh, I just got this idea after my run. And then um, I'll go back into Notion and then kind of work out my content from there. Uh, Google Gemini is kind of like a chat GBT. It's a chat bot. And if I'm ever in a creative block, a creative slump, I'll go on to Gemini and just ask what should I put for my YouTube title or something. And uh, so far, Google Gemini has been great. And it's free to use. If you have a Google account, you will have access to Google Gemini. I love that. Oh, wait, can I go through my software gear list oh. really quick? Where was yours? Oh. Sorry, I think it was Did right it after just bounce. Mine. Oh, weird. Okay. I think it was right after mine. Okay, mine's not as extensive as Trizzy, but I do want to share it because for those of you that don't know or came on late, like Trizzy and I, we have we host Ticket to Anywhere podcast. So Trizzy is our in-house editor, our magician. She puts everything up on YouTube, everything on every audio space you can listen. I am very much the opposite of that person. I don't do any of that. <laughs> um but to help me with that, I use these programs help me a lot and help my individual content creation. Canva, a lot of you have probably already heard of. I won a free year through Gabby Beckford Pax Light, and I loved it so much, like Canva Premiere Pro or whatever it is, that I started paying for myself for it myself. Obviously, it's a business expense after we um after that year ended. And Canva is literally designed for non-designers, which that's what I am. Like Trizzy is a designer. But for me, Canva, I'm like, this is what I need. And I kind of make it my own. It's I think $12.99 a month or $14.99 a month. And I think it's incredibly worth it because you can like remove backgrounds. You can create reels in it. You can do all sorts of things. I've made business cards. We've pitched brands through it. Like it's, you can send things to print through Canva. It's a wonderful, wonderful resource. Um, and the owner is Filipino Australian. So I'm very proud of that as well. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Google workspace. Oh, it's my baby. This is what Trizzy and I use actually, um, to collaborate and to project manage. So Anything Google, we're about that, especially love working offline in it, which is super mm -hmm. helpful. And for video, because I'm not the the wonderful editor that Trizzy is, I use CapCut, which I think is fantastic. I actually am still using the free version and I'm considering upgrading because it's like $5 a month or something. Uh, really, it sounds really affordable, but you know, in it integrates into TikTok, which is awesome. It has all these templates. And I think there's just more features that I'm able to unlock. So it was the first one I tried. I actually haven't even tried InShot. At the beginning, I was debating between both, but I downloaded CapCut first and loved it so much within the first like two days that I'm like, I don't need anything else. <laughs> and I am a heavy, probably too heavy, probably too reliant, heavy iPhone notes user. Like in my personal like device iPhone notes right now, I have like 635. That's and it's hard for me to get rid of them. I don't know why. Because I'm like, unless I know I really, really don't need it or I never want to see it again for personal reasons, then I like delete. But 
I usually don't. And you'll see even here, this is like Cape Town content that I have. Cape Town, I, I went to about a year and a half ago. I still haven't deleted it because I'm like, well, what if I can grab content from other you know, trips and kind of repurpose it for, for different locations around the world. But a lot of times from iPhone notes, um, because they're synced to my laptop too, copy and paste into Google workspace, then I have everything there. So, um, I'm a heavy iPhone notes user, but yeah, that's my s software gear list. <laughs> nice. Sorry. I missed out on that. No, that it's weird. okay. It's way less. Yours is like the pro version. I'm just like the little intermediate version. <laughs> no, that's great. That's like the range that we're spitting out right now it's mm -hmm. it's perfect for any creators hopefully okay and our podcast gear if you're thinking of starting a podcast this is what we basically started off with and we're continuing to use it and we're almost about five years in so like i mentioned earlier sony a7 III. we are a visual podcast you can find us on youtube um so we have to film ourselves in person talking um, Samsung Q2U is the mic that we're using and also we're using right now for this presentation. And this is a great beginner budget podcasting gear. And honestly, I had a talk with one of my old friends who's thinking of starting her own podcast yesterday. And I told her even, uh, even in like 10 years, I could see myself still using this mic. Like I think... Oh, it's yeah. one of those, if it's not broke, don't fix it. Mm -hmm. And I love the quality of it. Uh, we do have a backup mic that's usually on our camera, just in case there's a software issue or a tech issue that tends to happen. Luckily, it has not happened yet. Um, but that backup mic is the Rode. It's an on-camera Rode mic. The brand is Rode, R-O-D-E. So that just attaches to the camera and records the audio from there. Um, we both have Apple MacBooks that we use and, of course, light source to make sure we are perfectly lit up. Um, Adobe Audition, um, a laptop stand for Leah, <laughs> and Google Workspace where we share and collaborate a lot of ideas that um, we have for the year or for next week. Um, our favorite is WhatsApp. We just WhatsApp. add on there. <laughs> but it's so, okay, WhatsApp is so underrated. Like, Trizzy and I literally live in the same city. We don't even use iMessage. We both have iPhones. We've been using WhatsApp from the beginning. But we just love the functionality. I mean, Apple iPhones are catching up as far as functionality. But with WhatsApp, um, you we also reach our friends around the world in different time zones. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what keeps us there. Like, I'm in it all the time. I think people think it's weird to use it in the States. I'm like, I use it with half of my friends who live in the same city and solely WhatsApp. So, yeah, big plus for WhatsApp. Yeah, I like the the ease of making a voice note. I feel like with Apple or with iMessage, you have to kind of type or point to add many, many things. Yeah, too many buttons. <laughs> um, but WhatsApp is different. Um, if Leah and I cannot get together in studio, we have to record virtually. And currently we are using StreamYard. And this is this is also for if we bring on guests to talk on our um, podcast as well. Our hosting site is Buzzsprout. We've used it for, it wasn't our original hosting site, but we moved over after a year. So we've been using Buzzsprout for four years. We love the features and the functionality that they give us. You could edit inside the um, inside the site if you need to. You could add ads if you need to. Um, it's been great and it also shows analytics as well. Yep, and we pay for the, is it the $6 or $12 a month? It's $12.99 $12 a month. $12.99 a month, okay. Mm -hmm. And we, I think at the time we had started, we thought it was like the best price point for everything that we needed versus um, different podcast hosting sites. And I mean, we've been using it for almost five years now. So I think it's been doing us well thus far. Mm -hmm. And it's like an easy click of a button to distribute to Spotify, Apple, and all the many other podcast platforms out there. Mm -hmm. Okay, what to consider when deciding on gear? Obviously, I bet you guys were thinking of how much did all this gadget cost when we first started labeling out 
what <laughs> our gear list is. Price is always going to be the biggest factor. It's like, do you want to spend a thousand dollars or you could find something for a few hundred dollars that gives you the same quality. Um, and then that also leads into what type of model version you want. Me, I got the pocket, uh, DJI Pocket Osmo 3. Leah got the two and she got it for a beautiful price and it yeah, still it was, works perfectly. It was, I think Trizzy is asking what Trizzy got hers for. It was close to between seven and 800. Correct. And I got one model, um, let like one model older, purchased through a friend though. So we did a little haggling there and I paid 200 for mine. So $500 difference. And mm -hmm. it depends what's important to you at the time for me. I don't need the top, top gear, the newest gear, if it's going to cost me like a flight, a round trip flight to Asia. <laughs> no, I, I totally agree because when we also talk about model version as far as iPhones go, a lot of people are quick to jump on the top or whatever is the latest. And right now I have an iPhone 14 Pro. I personally think this phone, the quality of the video, the cinematic side, the portrait photos, even um, the panoramic photos is still very like top notch. And I don't foresee myself jumping onto getting like the latest phone right now. So if anybody wants to upgrade, I would say even the 14 is still a good phone to use. Wow. Yes. Um, and you also have to consider the physical side of it, like the body itself. The Sony camera that I have is heavy there are other sony cameras that are much lighter more compact um and also storage size there's some gadgets like let's say the insta360 brand has a model called the go 3 and their sizing is internal like you can't take out an sd card or you can't add the micro sd card in there it's all inside so but the the advantage of that is like it's super tiny it's even more discreet than the dji osmo um but if you are getting a camera that requires external storage you need to consider do you want a one terabyte sd card or yeah one terabyte sd card or do you need a sf card which is gonna hold a lot more and for heftier cameras um the features of the camera or the features of a backpack is something to consider as well. How many pockets you want? What's the zippers? Is it safe? Is it front opening? Is it, can I open it all different directions? Water resistance, waterproof. There is a difference between waterproof and water <laughs> resistance. <laughs> um, that also goes into functionality as well. Um, the types of accessories that you are considering some of these cameras can link up to a microphone. Microphone is an accessory and then also lighting as well and whatever types of, some people like to, what is it? Bedazzle their cameras as well, like put gems on it. It's not my style, but <laughs> do you, if that's you. Um, and also this one's important, especially for travelers. Are these gadgets or are these, um, backpacks, notepads, whatever, are they TSA approved? So most of these, most of the stuff that I have, I have to carry on with me because of the lithium battery. Um, there are stuff where you could just take the battery out and then send the camera off in your check-in bag. But why would you do that? That's like a thousand dollars out of your hand and you yeah. don't know if it's going to come back to you or not. <laughs> Um, but yeah, this is one of the big things that I uh, considered, especially when I was buying my Wandered Rogue Sling. It's like, can I fit that bag into my current carry-on backpack? Mm -hmm. And it does. So it was a easy purchase for me. Yeah, a lot of factors to consider there. Mm -hmm. Okay, so some of our favorite creator hacks we have mine personally is to create a shot list and an edit list this will help streamline your whole process from pre-production all the way to post-production and to just posting online 
so easy. Create a shot list, what you want, with what lens, what frame rate, and you go into your editing and you know exactly which files to choose, drag and drop, and then a work that usually might be a three-day work could turn into just like a three-hour work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and building off of that, I've learned... Um... I've, I've learned to build in time to actually be creative and shoot. So with Trizzy's like making your shot list to condense your time out filming, be sure to try to build that in say, okay, we're going to go to the pot. We want to go to this like botanical garden. We want to walk around and explore the botanical garden. But instead of like saying you're going to be there for five hours and maybe, um, you know, ex doing whatever comes up. It's like, wait, let's take the first hour to go through our shot list and just bam, 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 whatever we need, grab it. And then we can spend the next four hours doing whatever we want. If we happen to capture content, that's great. But building in time to actually be creative and shoot. So I've done this before where me and my friends are sharing a hotel room. We were in like Memphis at a creator conference. And instead of sightseeing with everyone, we're like, wait, we're going to film from 10 to 12 and we'll meet you guys up at brunch at 12 because we have to get this done. Mm -hmm. So building in time for it is it's been working so well uh, for me. Yeah. Love that. Um, and while you are shooting, I think it's very, very important to utilize your frame rates properly, your FPS frames per second. Um and these are suggestions. 24 frames per second will give you a more cinematic look. And it's perfect for a shot that it's, if your shot is very static and still, like nothing's moving. Um, or like the camera is not moving, but there's people like walking, trees are blowing. 24 frames per second will make it look extremely cinematic. Uh, 30 frames per second, really great for social media use. 60 frames plus is great for if a shot has lots of movement say a basketball game or a soccer game or if you're holding the camera and you're walking around town so uh, that just means there's more frames in that second to make that footage look 10 times crisper crispier and high quality um and if you're if you're playing around with these frame rates on a larger camera, like the Sony or a Canon, um, your FPS has to be twice the shutter. Oh, the next one is mine as well. <laughs> I was like, Trizzy got a lot of tips and hacks. <laughs> yeah. I, I love this one. So using your phone as a mic. So your microphone or your iPhone has an audio recording app. It's defaulted in there. So you could use that as um, like a quick note taking. Like, oh, uh, remember to tell Leah this new topic for an episode. Like that, you could use it to use notes or you could actually record voiceovers on it. Mm -hmm. And uh, if, you're, if, if you're not shy and your camera is like across the room from you, Mm -hmm. and you need to t speak some audio to it, some voiceovers, you could use your microphone and then people will just, it'll just be like a, a, a style mm -hmm. thing, you know? I mean, how many times, if you go on TikTok, you see this all the time. People are <laughs> literally doing this, which I didn't think, what, you know, I was like, whatever, but it's it's so common. And what, like, we don't believe in going, all of the gear that Trizzy and I, have have accumulated over years and years and years. We did not buy it all in one week because Correct. we couldn't afford that. <laughs> so if this is your best microphone and like your most inexpensive built-in one, you don't need to go out and buy microphones. Like, yeah, we use exactly. mini mics, lapels, but you don't need to spend a fortune on that. So that's like the best hack. And as far as like the audio recording um, capability, like when I go wine tasting and I create content, sometimes when they're explaining it so fast, I actually ask them, I was like, do you mind if I record you, um, your voice on my phone? Because I'm going to use it as notes for later to translate into like social media captions. So I can like pull from there and they're like, oh, no, I don't mind at all. Just because it's so much faster than me trying to type out 
mm-hmm. exactly what they're saying. I'm like, I'm just going to record your voice. It's not going to be put anywhere. It's personal use. Like, do I have your permission? And I make sure to capture that. <laughs> they're like, yes, you have my permission. <laughs> if they say, no, you don't have my permission, then I immediately stop recording right. and delete that. But yeah. Very important to be res- respectful. So good job. And Leah. legal. Yes. <laughs> Don't want to get caught up in any legal battle. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. Uh, and also using if those if you have an Apple Watch. This has been my favorite, especially for like working out content that I do. So your watch has a camera option. I use that as a monitor. And then for angles that I can't really see my um, the framing of my phone where I put it. I'll just look at my watch and they pair perfectly so I could adjust my camera angle, slide it left, slide it right, whatever I need to, and then I could hit the record button. So utilize all the functions of whatever gadgets you have. And um, I'm glad my Apple Watch has that that option as well. And you could also like zoom in and zoom out too, which is crazy. Yeah, that's that's incredible. Um, I love that using all the functions that that means you have to like take time to explore and actually, you know, find out what your device or whatnot does or your accessory does, which sometimes that can take like, you know, a year because you're like, mm-hmm. I didn't know it has this button and whatnot. Um, last point here, like I said earlier, build in time to actually be creative, build in time for rest. Also, this is incredibly important because as creators and podcasters and like while we're traveling it's a lot that's like literally doing two jobs at one time so you kind of need a break from it all sometimes Mm -hmm. a lot of times say I'm taking like a six day trip to Philly or five and a half day trip to Philly which I did actually last summer on the day I flew in and got settled in and the day I flew out which was like a half day I didn't do any content on purpose it was just whatever floated across my mind whatever I decided to capture but nothing about the content was very intentional about capturing. So those are my rest days, essentially, um, where I didn't want to have to remember to capture things. And then I was like, okay, the four days in between, that's when I'll purposely go through my list and make sure I'm getting X, Y, Z. Um, but even just when you're not traveling, when you're at home, you know, a lot of this presentation is is relevant to things you could use at home on your own, right? Or mm-hmm. even if you're not a creator or or starting out as a new one, um, just maybe taking the weekends off or turning your phone off after like 7 p.m. and until 7 a.m. the next day, things like that, building in those boundaries for rest. Perfect. Which that is a perfect lead into. The strongest content tool is your well-being. If you're not well, your content is going to show. Um just create for yourself. I think throughout these years, especially during the pandemic, a lot of people were trying to um, find something to do. So social media was always there for them. They're hopping on trends. They're trying to feed the algorithm. And eventually it leads to burnout because you're, you start to not create for yourself. You start not to feel good about yourself. And so Once you post something, maybe the quality kind of just starts lacking quality over quantity. And you have to be aware that progress is always going to be there and practice makes progress. There's no such thing as perfection. There's no perfect Instagram reel. There's no perfect YouTube uh, travel vlog out there. Just know that whatever you're posting, on your own time, you're taking a step ahead to create more progress for yourself and for your line of work. And eventually this will lead into you finding the right gear for yourself, knowing what your process is like and creating your own schedule. Like you handle everything yourself on your own time. Don't matter what anybody else thinks, what the algorithm thinks, just make sure that you are good, you are healthy, and you are happy. 100%. And you can balance everything. Um, this photo, by the way, it was taken in Las Vegas out. Um, what's it called? The 
This is in like the T-Mobile Park. Arena. Yeah, the T-Mobile Arena. I, this the space is called something, but it was taken in Vegas. This is actually February 2020, the end of February. right before <laughs> right we got before into everything shut down. Yeah, right mm-hmm. before, like a week before. Wow. So. <laughs> Yeah, so if you, you know, enjoyed um, this webinar and want more information, we actually just released literally like 48 hours ago our latest podcast episode on the realities of being like a travel content creator. Our gear, again, a lot more gear. Some, Some of it we don't talk about here. Our struggles even in our tips. I got really personal. I've had a big life change recently. So I talk about it a lot in this episode and how it's kind of affecting my travel content creation. Um, It's pretty new. I haven't really talked much about it before, but it's in the episode. You know, I love to, we like to open up about that on their podcast because we feel connected to the audience. But again, it's on YouTube, ticket number two, anywhere and anywhere that you can listen. And yeah, this this episode was a long time coming for me and Trizzy, so... Yeah, for sure. And if you guys have more questions for us that we can't answer uh, here, you could reach out, connect with us. These are our handles um, on Instagram and emails as well. And if you are interested in listening to more travel content on our podcast, we drop a new episode every other Wednesday and we are available on Spotify, Apple, YouTube for visual purposes and a lot of other podcast streaming platforms. Yeah, we'd so love to thank answer you any questions. Yeah, that anyone has now. I know we have a few minutes left, but um, I have a quick question. Um, for those starting out in content creation, what's like the one piece of advice you wish you knew when you started? Beautiful Ooh. question. Ooh, mm-hmm. what's one piece of advice? Um, I can start. Yeah, go ahead. I think um, I know everyone talks about consistency, but they don't talk. They don't say anything more than the word than that word. So I'm like, that doesn't mean anything to me. It's like when I'm growing up, my mom was like, save your money. And I'm like, OK, what does that mean? <laughs> like my parents didn't give me any other background information. So I feel the same when people are like, what do you need? To, what do you need when you start out content creation? Consistency. I'm like, OK, wh- what? So we <laughs> it took us years to figure that out. So I'd say start conservatively, honestly, get on a schedule Mm. immediately, but start that schedule conservatively. So when I'm telling you, if you think you can only release a one podcast episode that's built on your iPhone, that's 10 minutes long because you can't record anything for longer than that, or you don't have enough content, release that one 10 minute podcast episode once a month and keep at it till you know for a fact 200% that you can drop more. So start conservatively and say like, you can only don't, uh, you can only give Friday evening to content creation. That's like all you think you can do. You think, oh, maybe I can do Monday evening as well. It's like, no, just start with Friday evening and go from there (laughs) and then see how you feel after that. But it's gotta be like 150% decision to like move to the next step. That's what my big thing is. So Trizzy and I are still every other Wednesday as far as the podcast and you know we hope to expand it in the future but it works really well for us right now Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah that's a great one mine is basically um what i kind of explained in the the strongest content tool is to create for yourself i remember there's a few times in the early stages where i was like trying to find the trendiest music for this and the trendiest audio and and then i look back on my profile sometimes and i'm like that is not me Me. like that's not who i am i'm more of a curated person um curated content creator hence the shot list and the edit list and uh, yeah i just wish I just had, I created my own personality for myself in my early stages, instead of just hopping on to what everybody is doing and just losing my sense of self at the beginning. I didn't know that, Trizzy. I didn't, I mean, I know you said that in our episode when we were recording last week, but I mean, I know we both hopped on trends, but I guess it's very important. I uh, Hindsight is twenty twenty, right? Like mm-hmm. looking back and saying like, oh yeah, I wish I wasn't like that like I didn't realize you felt that way so thank you for being (laughs) vulnerable but I always feel (laughs) like 
Trizzy is a very like distinct creator. If you watch her content, like Triz Inc. and even um, her and her partner's content, and then like our content, it, she she has a very like distinct style, and I it's much appreciated and well loved by many around the world. So, hot thank stuff. you, thank you. Yeah, and I'm not stuff. I'm not knocking for those who you know hop on the trends. I think they're great if that's in your nature. But uh, if if I'm just talking about myself. Um, right. most of the time the trends aren't really for me if it's mm -hmm. a dancing trend maybe i'll do it <laughs> <laughs> yeah her dancing videos on our podcast accounts blow up all the time and they're like <laughs> i didn't know she was like that i was like hold on this girl was like world of dance superstar are you kidding me <laughs> stop it <laughs> yeah that's our advice judy jordan <laughs> Yeah. Um, so I got a question. Does, does the equipment that you guys take or the gear you take when you travel, does that change depending on if you're going to a first world country versus like a third world country and anything in between? Nice. I'll speak on this first. Um, it does not change, um, mainly with my MacBook, my camera is always going to be with me regardless. Cause I use that professionally and personally, like I said, that one is my baby, so that stays with me. There's been a few times where Leah and I had to record on our international trips. And I believe the one time I did mine, I was in the Philippines. And um, I ended up not bringing my heavy mic, but the on-camera mic that I um, mentioned earlier, the road mic, I used that as part of the episode. And that one sounded great, too. Yeah, definitely. I think for me, it actually changes if I'm going to a tropical versus country versus a non-tropical country <laughs> because my gear isn't as like heavy duty as Trizzy's. It's mainly pretty compact. So for me, if I'm going to Southeast Asia or anywhere tropical, I bring a lot more waterproofing, um, a lot more dry bags to fit into other dry bags <laughs> and whatnot. Like I think when I was on boat tours in the Philippines, I had to bring my laptop with me because I was working remotely. So I'd stick it in the laptop case, the water resistant laptop case, then put it in a dry bag, then put it in my waterproof backpack. Even though it was under the ship, I was like, still, what if the ship floods? <laughs> you know, so try to like let it be waterproof for as long as, as possible. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I think the only, I bring my waterproof phone pouch anywhere because it's still usable in like the rain, for example. So for me, it's more like, waterproofing versus not <laughs> okay it's kind of a, a follow-up somewhat follow-up when you're traveling to uh, across the world to different countries do you have any issues with uh customs when you get into a place i mean i have good limited, one for you trizzy <laughs> i have limited uh yeah experience traveling internationally at least with equipment very little mm -hmm. so. right so i do get a bit of heart palpitations every time I land into any countries. It doesn't matter if it's first or third world. Um, I just, I, that's just me. Um, mm -hmm. There are, there were a few times where I did not bring my drone because I knew Egypt wouldn't allow it. China wouldn't allow it. Mm -hmm. um, the only time that I flew internationally would be the Philippines and Europe. So there were a lot of research that I did before I went to, let's say, China regarding the drones. We've seen many people fly their drones, get the drone shots of, you know, Shanghai Oriental Pearl Tower. It's beautiful there. I decided not to bring mine because the two cities in China that I would be going to were a sh very, very strict no, no fly zone. Mm -hmm. And I didn't want to add on that stress of like me trying to sneak it in and just letting it fly just in case I can. But for that, if there's anything that I've heard about a major city, I would not bring um, my gadgets with me. So I just left that at home. Europe, on the other hand, they do have major cities, um, but I knew to reach out to let's say a, a drone shop in the area, Ghent for, for Ghent in Belgium, for instance, I reached out to a drone shop in that city, knowing that Ghent is a little bit, 
a little bit of a smaller town than Brussels. So Brussels, I knew for sure I could not fly. But Ghent was, the research before I reached out to them was like, yeah, you can, no, you can't. Yeah, you can, no, you can't. Mm -hmm. So I confirmed it with a drone shop and they were like, yeah, you can. <laughs> so I was like, okay, I'm gonna bring my drone. Everything's okay. Nice. So it seems like it's less, it's less of, can I bring it and it maybe gets confiscated and not so much of, I'm going to have to pay certain custom fees to bring it in. Is that correct? Correct. I've never um, okay. gotten to an issue where a uh, government tried to tell me or TSA or their security tried to tell me that I need to pay X amount to get it through. Okay. Um, I know maybe Egypt, some people might have been, you know, scammed at the airport. Mm. But luckily for me, my Egyptian experience was just amazing. So I didn't run into that issue. Yeah. Yep. Probably because you're not trying to sell your equipment there. So that makes sense. <laughs> okay. Thanks. Appreciate it. Yeah. But course. actually I wanted to, I wanted to add to Trizzy's, um, commentary. I don't have a drone, but actually Trizzy and I were on this trip together. We do know that certain places, regions, historical sites, museums, etc., will actually charge you if you bring your equipment in. So Trizzy and I and a bunch of others went to Chichen Itza in Mexico in October 2020. Anything bigger than your phone, you were charged 50 Mexican pesos for, which was um, a little over two U.S. dollars, which may not seem for any like anything to us. But our my go I brought my GoPro in is barely f bigger than my phone and they were charging anyway. Like if I had known that I wouldn't have brought my GoPro in. So I was like, OK, can I just like put it in my backpack? And they're like, well, we already saw that you have it. So you have to pay us. <laughs> Yeah. And like, I don't know if it was, you know, we were, spe I was speaking in Spanish. Our guide was speaking in Spanish. I don't, and I think that wasn't a targeted towards me or anyone else that had a camera thing. It was literally a new rule that Chichen Itza has implemented. Anyone bringing in anything bigger than a phone to record, we're going to charge you for it. So it's something to watch out for. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. sneaky. Thanks. It is. Yeah, <laughs> it is. They want the royalties off what content creators are. <laughs> Yeah. Maybe. Um, and I have you know, one I'm more not, question. I'm sure it goes back to the site to keep it looking beautiful and clean. And I hope it does. Um, yeah. and luckily, like it wasn't, like I said, it wasn't a targeted incident. We were all charged. So Thanks. they weren't just coming for you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I have one more question um before our time is up, but um, I think this goes for everyone, content creators or not. And this might be something that you kind of covered a little bit with your your shot list, but how do you balance being in the moment versus capturing the shot? And I mean, like I said, this goes for content creators. It can go for like parents recording their kids or something like that. Um, how do you find that balance? And do you have tips for people who might struggle with that? Totally. Oh, I love that question. Very good. Um, for me, there's like I mentioned before, I'm a very curated um, content creator. So if I'm going to eat at a restaurant and it's like a new restaurant with beautiful plating, then I'll be like, okay, maybe I'll create like a mini shot list. But at the same time, what I'll do is do everything quickly. And then the rest of the time, just put my camera away, put my phone away and be more in the moment. So same thing with if I arrived at the Great Wall of China, let's get all the content that we need, mm -hmm. get out the way and then be in the moment. So it's always trying to give yourself more time to be in the moment and, and the content creating side should be less time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to build, I literally would say the exact same thing. And I actually think the more advanced and the deeper you get into your journey, you don't want to be creating all the time. I think when we first started, we were okay with having phones out 24-7, every meal, every vacation. And now that we're several years into it, we're like, let's just do this for five minutes and then like actually eat the meal and enjoy it. Mm -hmm. You know, I think it just comes with with experience and time as well. Like you figure it out. And be like, wait, we have to enjoy while we're here. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. The I have another example to add on. When I usually create like 
fitness or basketball content, I would shoot everything first and then do my actual routine for it. Cause if I'm just, if I'm just like, you know, faking it, it's, it kind of, to me, it doesn't feel very authentic. So I'll just do what my routine is, but shorten it for just the content side and then go back and do my whole routine. Mm -hmm. Thank you, ladies. I appreciate you being here today. Thank it was you so for awesome having to us. hear from you. Thank you for um, hosting us. It's been great. Yeah. I'm so glad you were able to come on. Um, we're going to have this up on our YouTube channel, but we'll also send the recording to you ladies too, so you could do whatever it is that you would like thank to do you. with it. But thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Make sure you guys go follow them at Ticket to Anywhere podcast. We'll see you guys soon, okay? Thanks, Travel Goods. Thank you, guys. Take care. Bye, guys. Bye.